Welcome. In this session, we will be discussing best practices in SXA, the Psychor Experience Accelerator. The practices we discussed are not tied to a specific version of SXA, unless mentioned otherwise. My name is Mark van Aalst, and I work as a senior technical evangelist here at Psychor, and I'm joined by Adam Esmanovic, senior product manager for SXA. Thank you, Mark. Let's start. SXA was crafted with the intention to provide the best tools to develop a website. Do it as efficiently and effortlessly as a framework can enable you to do. But that's what SXA is, a framework. We deliver the tools, processes and best practices, but in the end you are building the website and you need to come to the canvas with a plan and the right skills. Having the best brush will not automatically make you paint a Mona Lisa. You need to plan the work, think about architectural consequences of your decisions, consult others and best practices, and empathize with your final user, the editor. In the end, when you're done, you are done. But the author and the website owner, their journey is just starting. Make that journey an enjoyable one. Make them the beneficiary, not a victim of your choices. Let's make it a canvas that our client will enjoy. Praise you, not curse you. I'm sure you've already built many websites. Some of you might only have been involved in a new project. Some may have experienced the joys of supporting someone else's creations. You know that this can go very well or very badly. Every SXA implementation has different requirements. However, one thing that all SXA implementations have in common is that, is that the whole process of building an SXA site can be divided into four steps. Define, design, analyze, and implement. The define phase itself is not that specific to SXA. However, the outcome of setting the goals and requirements will determine how your SXA solution will be structured. And during the design phase, UX designers and graphic designers typically determine what the look and the feel of the site will be. Starting with the UX and usability and finalizing this with a graphical design. While this is a typical way of work, SXA introduces some new options. First, you could choose to use a wireframe mode to determine the UX. Using SXA components in a wireframe, you can create real life mockups of your pages. If you choose not to use the wireframe mode, we highly recommend to introduce your UX and design people to the SXA component library. By knowing what's available out of the box and knowing how you can make changes to those components, UX designers can keep the SXA component in mind when creating the designs. The analyze phase is most likely the key phase of an XXA implementation. Taking the design of the site, you will be creating a gap analysis of required functionality. Try to map as much of the design to SXA components, and you will end up with a list of components that you will need to create yourself. Apart from identifying the component, this is also the phase where the reusability comes to mind. Try to identify the different rendering variants you need, which partial designs and page designs and what can be reused. The outcome of the analyze phase is the foundation of the implementation phase. Here you will start implement your SXA solution, while at the same time the front end developers can start or continue their theme development. Each of our slides is tagged with the phase you need to apply the best practice to achieve the best results. Take it away, Mark. Notice that this slide is tag defined in the top right corner. This illustrates the phase on which Anna spoke about in a previous slide. So during the define phase, you will determine the business requirements for the SXA platform. And this will very likely influence the way you want to set up your site and tenant architecture. Things like multilingual sites, different brand sites, shared content, security, governance, they all play a vital role in setting up your architecture. And to help you determine the preferred architecture, we created this diagram, this flowchart, which can be found on the documentation site. You'll find links later on. 
One of the best practices involving a multi-site scenario is that of creating your own site template, your blueprints, that can be instantiated quickly. By using SXA's cloning functionality, you can instantly create a self-running duplicate of an existing theme. Whether it's a new product site, event site, or country site, you're, you can template your own sites inside SXA. Build 90% of the site and use that as your starting template for new ones. After cloning the site, you would only need to finish the other 10% of the site and therefore reduce your implementation time and increasing your time to market for the customers. The same principle can be applied for development purposes. How many times have you experienced that you want to change a particular rendering, a partial design or even page designs? And what about doing maintenance on a production website? Try making the changes for one site, two sites, or even three sites. How much easier would it be if you would just have one single place of truth where you would store all of your developer artifacts? Consider using a dedicated development site that consists solely of developer artifacts, rendering variants, partial designs, your page designs, all under one single site in SXA. Make that site shareable so that others can use those presentation components, but you as a developer would still have control over those components. It would also help greatly with deployments as it really differentiates the developer owned artifacts and the marketing owned artifacts. One of the best aspects of SXA is that you have many options as to how do you approach component customizations. In the simplest approach, you can just provide a toggle that will add a class that can be styled in your theme. If your component needs to be styled radically different or show the content in a different way, you can provide an alternative variant for it. Variants lets you specify an arbitrary HTML, but they have another great impact. They can also be used to group different visualizations that are similar in nature, not to overwhelm your editor with a huge number of components. For example, if you're presenting an employee as a blog author in one page or as a contact in another. Finally, every client will have specific needs that will not be satisfied by out of the box components. Think mortgage calculator for a bank or a savings calculator for a photovoltaic panel retailer. In those cases, you can still have the full power of Sidecar at your disposal. Creating an SXA component is just as easy as creating a vanilla sidecar component, but you want to think about it beforehand so that your choices make sense for the editor rather than be structured in a way that was the easiest to whoever picked the task during the implementation. Should you choose to deliver a new component, we're also giving you options. You can clone an existing component, maybe because your current editors are used to specific names, or maybe because you li your list of variants starts to become overwhelming. Create a new one out of the prefabricated SXA behaviors, or even create one from scratch. Every SXA component should still give the editor the option to apply styles, pick a variant if applicable, or be composable. Consider what is the best for the scenario where it's going to be used and what your marketers are used to. Atomic design is great, but atomic design should inform your HTML design, not necessarily what your editors will be doing. Make the component fit the purpose your marketer has rather than focusing on ultimate flexibility. For example, for landing pages, you can consider turning whole sections into specific components. If you make the Lego blocks too small, editing a page can become a daunting task and your experience editor performance will also suffer. Remember that you have full control over the data source and the component mechanics. In most cases, it will be much easier for your editor to drop a section featuring a title and three promos as a single component with the ability to add more with an edit frame rather than making them drop four separate components. When using SXA, it's very easy to add components to your pages. 
With the added layers of partial designs and page designs, it sometimes can become a bit unclear as to where do you want to add your components. So as a general rule, we recommend you to use your partial designs to add structure to your pages. Consider them as the foundation, foundation of your page. You can add placeholders or containers to the areas within the partial design, making it possible for authors to add components to those specific parts of your pages. For those renderings that are more or less set in stone, components like a navigation, you can simply add those components to your partial designs directly. When using components, make sure to use the grid settings on the components to determine the width for your components. As a general practice, you should always try to change the components itself before you start other, co other components, like splitters on the page, to add structure. By doing so, you are making sure that you keep the number of renderings to a minimal. This will benefit the load time in your experience editor and therefore the author experience itself. And did you know that you can restrict renderings to only being used on certain pages or on partial designs? If you click on your rendering variant in a content editor, you can select the allowed partial designs in the allowed in templates field. By using this method, you will make sure that only your styled rendering variants can be used by your authors. It also helps in limiting their options and making it more clear as to what they can use. While your authors will learn how to work with the solution over time, you can aid this process immensely by naming them based on the scenarios where they should be used. Consider using a variant named Hero Product Teaser over something like image with title and description. And picture is worth a thousand words. Providing a preview for the variant will go a long way to make the author not having to even read the title. To provide a preview, open the variant item in content editors, scroll to the appearance section and upload the preview to the thumbnail field. There are scenarios in which providing multiple of the same is not necessary. For example, a page can have a title, a title in navigation, which you may want to abbreviate so that it fits in a menu, and of course, a good old sidecore display name. SXA allows you to define a fallback for such scenarios. In the examples shown on the slide, you can see a fallback taking first attempt to use the navigation title, but if it's empty, it will try the page title. If that's empty as well, it will finally take the display name. Both the item-based rendering variant and Scriven allows for fairly rich scenarios where you can protect the author from making a mistake or simply skipping the need to enter a redundant information. By itself, Sycor already has quite an advanced caching mechanism. And with SXA, there are even more options. First, we have global caching. In the rendering definition item, you can specify what action Sycor takes to render the component. If you set the cache settings in the rendering definition item, these settings are applied to all sites unless cache settings are specified otherwise. If you set the cache options for a rendering on a site level, this will override the global cache settings in the rendering definition items. Setting cache options for specific renderings can be convenient. For example, because for a particular site, you want the page content rendering to be cached. The caching options on a placeholder override the global cache settings in the rendering definition items and the site level for cache settings. Setting the cache options on a placeholder affects all renderings within that placeholder. For example, if you use a container to add additional CSS styling to other renderings, the cache settings on the placeholder for that container apply to all renderings within that container. If you set the cache options on a particular rendering, this will override all other cache settings. This could be very convenient if your website contains pages that are the same for all users except for user details from logged in users, such as a username. If you want to cache all these pages for all users by enabling cache options on the site level, 
the entire page would be cached every time for each user with a different username. This could cost you a huge amount of resources. To resolve this issue, SXA lets you apply donut caching that caches only one copy of the entire page for all the users except for a small section that remains dynamic. This section is like a hole in the cache content, much like a donut. Donut caching is very useful in the scenarios where most of the pages are rarely changed, except for a few sections that dynamically change or change based on a request parameter. For example, a snippet on your page that contains renderings that pull information from third parties. Because you have no control over third party websites and the information needs to be up to date, you do not want the output of this to be cached. Another scenario could be a placeholder with an embedded placeholder. For example, a splitter that contains a tab rendering. Both the splitter and the tab rendering have caching applied. You can disable caching for one of the tab items to enable personalization and testing. The aim of this session was not to exhaust all of the best practices. If we tried to do that, we would probably have to speak for a few hours, and even then we would miss a few of them. What we try to convey is that you should think about those aspects of your project and showcase some of those missed opportunities. In the end, we are building the websites for our users. The fact that they will be able to achieve their goals is not enough. We want our customers to greet us with a smile the next time we walk through their office door. The best way to achieve it is to provide a solution that is well thought through, effective, efficient, and easy to use. I hope we managed to convince you that the best practices we have come up with, together with our partners and users, are both easy to employ and benefit everyone. Here are some resources that we have identified that you should probably study before your next SXA implementation. Remember to define, design, analyze, and only then implement. Let's have a lot of great websites out there. There is also a great website that Mark has created for you. It employs a lot of those best practices of which we talked about. It gives you a implementation samples and it create and it provides a large number of different component uh, mixes that can make your website shine. And apart from using the style guide as your learning resource, it's also a great site to experiment with. So try some stuff out, build your own components, remove them create shared sites whatsoever. Thank you for joining us for this session. I hope you find it useful. And we're looking forward to your SXA implementations. Thanks. Thank you.